next presentation is by uh, Skylar, and she's going to be presenting. Oh, that's right, MSC framework for stock synthesis. All right, great. Thank you so much. So yeah, so to follow up with Rick's talk, essentially what we're going to be talking about now is uh, a project that we've just sort of started up from the bottom up, kind of looking at potentially using stock synthesis models as our operating model within an MSC framework. So this is a big team effort. I'm presenting today on behalf of the team that's made up of scientists from the Southeast Fisheries Science Center in Miami. Nathan Vaughn is in the back. He's one of the leads of this project, as well as Rick uh, and other folks at the Northwest Fisheries Science Center. So this is sort of a follow-up and in, in sort of when we talk about the next generation, it's very important as we talk about a generalized model, but it's also important how we talk about how can we apply these sorts of uh, MSCs or simulation analyses to sort of get at maybe the data limited species. So for today's presentation and also uh, being here throughout the week, we're really here to sort of share what we plan on doing with this project, talk about the planned features, but most importantly, get some feedback, have some discussions, have some folks. We'd love to get a subset of people to potentially serve as beta testers as this uh, platform gets developed. We're really interested. We've heard some talks already about uh, different researchers requesting being able to use this kind of approach. So we see it. Um, and the, the last couple of sentences here really highlight where we're coming from in the Southeast US. Essentially, we know we need next generation stock assessment models, but we also need the capability within the operating models that we develop to be able to build in representation of the data we have, of the uncertainties, and that's sort of where we are coming from uh, in terms of where this project got on the ground. So just some, some background, this, this, we're calling it the SSMSE project. Now, granted, this is more of a framework that MSE could be conducted with. We're not saying this is the end all be all that's gonna be coded uh, in R. We know MSC is a, a really large process with stakeholder input, but this, pro this, this project will give us the tools to develop stock synthesis models that we already have to develop those into operating models given the uncertainties we see and then have that capability to loop it in and be able to conduct MSEs or simulation analyses on different research questions that we have. And here, you know, as we've kind of talked about throughout the week, and I know Ian will be presenting on r for ss there's a lot of different tools that sort of have been growing and help us sort of make this more of a, a framework that's potentially followed by not just SS users, but if there's a lot of R interactions, it sort of brings up the user base. And currently this project has about a two year time period. Um, as I mentioned, we just kind of are getting started. Um, we're hoping to have some sort of beta testing approaches, possibly mid 2020. So please uh, keep us in mind. So the first thing we definitely want to highlight, we, we're aware there's other MSC packages or approaches out there. So the FLR is one big one that's being used. The DLM tool is, is sort of a, it's an R package that compiles a bunch of different data limited approaches that can then be tested to see which management procedure or a data limited assessment method may work with your population given a bazillion assumptions and uncertainties you have to account for. Um, and the MSC tool as well. So each of those have the capability to read in certain components of a stock synthesis model and develop an operating model, but they're generally a more simplistic uh, operating model. It may not have all the complexity of a stock assessment or a stock synthesis model. Um, and also SS3 SIM. So we have had some discussions on how we can sort of, you know, not reinvent the wheel, potentially work with Kelly. I know she's one of the key developers with SS3 SIM and we'll be talking on Friday. Uh, but basically, we've, we've seen the literature that there's, there's other MSCs that have been done with stock synthesis of the operating model. I think Alan talked about Halibut yesterday and kind of talked about some of the issues with trying to generalize this kind of approach. There's a lot of intricacies with when you try to use SS as your operating model. I think there's a lot of things we can learn. I think there's a lot of knowledge in this room that really can help us in developing this project further. So just some, some background on, on where this developed. We didn't just think this up one day. What happens in our area in the Southeast US, we have a lot of complexities. We have stocks from data rich, from Red Snapper, 
which is our key stock in the Gulf of Mexico, very politically charged, down to the slew of data limited assessment, so data limited species in the US, Caribbean, the Gulf of Mexico, the South Atlantic. Um, we also manage the, or are responsible for assessing the sharks as well as some of the ICAT species. So we have a lot of complexities. We have a lot of diversity, a lot of different stocks. We also have some complexities in our fisheries that have led to some of the bells and whistles that have been uh, designed in stock synthesis. So we have a huge recreational component of fisheries for many of our stocks. And as Eric showed yesterday, that's fairly dominant for lots of our stocks. Most of the removals can be recreational. There's a lot of uncertainty associated with the recreational removals because it's not only landings, but it's discards. And there's a lot of, um, a lot of work that goes on behind the scenes to try to develop the best estimates, and that is a work in progress. So we have a lot of uncertainty built in. We also have the issue of bycatch. So for the shrimp fishery in the Gulf of Mexico, we have a significant amount of mortality for some of the uh, reef fish, re red snapper, vermilion snapper, gray trigger fish. So these kinds of these kinds of issues arise for many of our species uh, that we assess currently, but also for some of our data limited stocks as well. And uh, Rick sort of mentioned in this, his talk about the fleet allocation. So we run our assessment model, we get our, our OFL or, or TAC, and essentially that then gets broken up into 76%, for example, for red grouper, what I assess, 76% goes commercial, 24% goes recreational, and that allocation is assumed over in time for projections. But that sort of adds in additional complexities when it comes time to the new recreational data estimates have led to much higher uh, landings estimates. Therefore, the allocations need to be revisited and all of this kind of plays in. So it's the sort of information where when we run our projections, we make a lot of assumptions and there's just lots of different pieces. So just for context, and I agree R for SS is fantastic. Um, but just for context, this is just the plot of the data types and the time series that go into the Gulf of Mexico red snapper assessment, which I'd say is our most data rich. Essentially, it's just we have a two area model for the eastern and the western Gulf of Mexico. We have 16 indices of abundance in total. There's many different data inputs that go in. There's a lot of data compilers that go into this assessment. So it takes quite a bit of time to just get all of those different uh, sources of information into the model. So as you can imagine, we have lots of stocks we have to assess. We currently have um, not as many resources, not as many staff as we'd like. So instead of currently, we're not able to do an assessment every year on our species, but that's where this project kind of came out of. So in the, the Gulf, in the Southeast US, because we're sort of limited, we can't do a stock assessment every year we're starting to look into these alternative approaches. So for example, we want to do something that's called an interim analysis. Essentially, it's like a hybrid. You do your stock assessment, you get your catch advice, your OFL, ABC uh, from in US terminology. And then every, say every three to five years, you conduct your stock assessment, you get that information. But in between those years, generally we set, or the SSC, the Scientific and Statistical Committee, decides to set uh, catch advice, the ABC, either as a constant value or potentially changing. But in this case, much of our assessments, when we give the advice lag, so we have a few years where we've, after we've collected data, that it's sort of farther behind. So with these sort of interim approaches, the plan is we're going to be able to have more adaptive management. So one of the big issues for the Gulf of Mexico, we had the red grouper assessment, and there was a very large red tide in the first year of our projection period. So we provided stock status in 2017. However, 2018, there was a big event with mortality. So these kinds of analyses on top of single or our stock assessments really would help us get a better handle on what's going on with the population and also match sort of when the fishermen come and say to us, what do you mean you're recommending this OFL? We could say these sorts of interim approaches where one of this, this is just one option, but essentially we need that framework to be able to simulation test if we're doing some sort of you know, simplistic management procedure, we need to tune it. We need to know what would be the performance metrics that we'd need to look into, what sort of risks would come out of that. Are we recommending a method that is potentially useful and is not gonna get us in trouble? And so that sort of analysis, not to mention 
having to provide advice for a lot of the data limited species sort of started this, this, this need for this SSMSE project. And that's why the Southeast really jumped on board to try to get at this issue where we're really um, in an important time to be able to provide these sort of interim management advice between our stock assessments. And so the, the overall goal, while we hope that this process, this framework eventually will be useful for everybody around the world, whoever's using SS, by using the Southeastern assessments as sort of what we're building on, because there's all the different complexities, we're hoping that building on some of these more complex models will have usability for the other areas as well. So one thing to note with trying to look at the interim analyses, we tried looking into FLR, but the complexity of our red grouper model, because we had discards, we weren't able to just use that framework and pull for or move forward. Same with DLM tool, you know, it, at the time it was a single fishery. We have strong recreational commercial. We have complexities that the packages that were out there at that time really just didn't, they didn't have the, um, or they weren't as useful as we were hoping. And hence we've decided to say, well, we have these assessment models that have been fitted. They've been peer reviewed. There's a significant amount of review in the Southeast with the Southeast data assessment review process. So we have these models that have been worked on by a, a group of people. They've been accepted for management advice. This is what sort of information we should be using to get at what our population is doing. It is our representation of what's going on, of the complexities that we think we need to include. And so that also creates this, there's a huge library out there. As Rick said, I think there's over 100 SS models now. So there's a lot of folks that would potentially benefit from this, this type of project. Now, one thing that we have started discussing is looking at trying to uh, expand the data generation capabilities within SS. So how are we going to incorporate the uncertainties? There's other issues in terms of, or in addition to variability, we'd like to be able to look at, say, autocorrelation and indices. There are other issues that we're hoping in this framework to somehow get at as we're generating the data for additional, or for use in the estimation phase. So just a, a schematic here that, um, that Catherine, so Catherine During as well has been put on this product in addition to Nathan. So the two of them have been really scheming on and keeping everyone on, on track of trying to get at some of these issues. So essentially you get your SS model, you're gonna, the, the design is we'll have some sort of um, R code to turn it into an R object. From there, we'll be able to produce a, an operating model in SS terminology. So the red boxes are just identifying the files that'll be in SS, uh, in an SS structure. Red is, or the blue is just the R object. So essentially get your SS operating model, data generation is likely gonna be done in R uh, coding outside in terms of determining how we're gonna simulate the different composition data the other types of information, give the users the um, ability to select distributions and other potential issues they'd like to encounter or include. And then from there, we're going to, let's see what this is. So yeah, so generate our data sets. We're gonna read it into the, fun the framework for SS data file, couple that with either a stock assessment. Granted, we, we totally recognize here SS should not be both the operating model and the estimation model. In some instances, it may with different applications. However, that could be the estimation model could be anything from a data limited approach to a simple catch based type approach. So basically this, this project will set up a framework and then from there, based on what questions you have that you want to answer, you can determine how to set up your estimation model. But from there, in terms of the Southeast, we're interested in looking at the reference points, looking at performance metrics, which we haven't quite gotten into yet since we're sort of early on in the phase, uh, getting the ABC, so within the US, the terminology, and then essentially get our, you know, the total, the catch advice that comes out of that, apply the allocations, get our, for, for our quotas by fleet and the projection, and then essentially complete the loop. So the benefit here, we use the models we have and develop this framework. So it's a closed loop simulation framework that would then be available. And so Rick certainly touched on a lot of the, what are the benefits of using stock synthesis as the operating model? There are many models out there. There's a huge user base that, that there's a lot of um, 
information on the V Lab. There's lots of references. So there's a lot of folks already using this and have put in the time and effort to these models. So there's also been, as Rick mentioned, there's a lot of testing that goes on with stock synthesis. And there's also a lot of support and updates, much of the support sitting in the back row. But basically the, the benefit of this project, it's gonna integrate the stock assessment approach and give us the ability to conduct MSEs or even just simulation analyses to get at some of these key questions that we face in terms of managing all of our fisheries from data poor to data limit or data rich. And so we've just sort of started talking about now about, I think one of the hardest parts of this project is gonna be developing how we generate the data, what distributions we have and how can we recreate the, the quality of the data that we see. So in the Southeast US, we have very poor data in some instances. We have low sample sizes. We, we don't see, we have some high uncertainty. So there's a lot of thinking and, and thoughts that have gone into this type of the analysis. So how are we gonna specify generating the data where we can actually show the simulated data and the actual data and not be able to tell the difference? So can we pass that red face test? That's really where we're at now is figuring out how to go about that. And as I mentioned, we want to include all types of data, the uh, time series of catches, discards, indices of abundance, which is very important for our models. As I mentioned, we often have more than one index of abundance. So when it comes time to try to apply these interim analyses, we need to be able to, to test them on what we're seeing with these stocks. So are we representing the population? How would these methods actually work? Do we have enough information in those indices? And are we going to get to the right picture, to the right, uh, where we want to be? Are we going to get um, in trouble with stock, stock status? And so we, we need the ability to generate data that matches the historic trends. And so other aspects in the Southeast, we also tend to apply time varying natural mortality. We do have the red tide. So we treat it as a fishing fleet, a pseudo fishing fleet for our red grouper and gag grouper assessment. Recruitment, we're very interested in being able to capture the variability, the autocorrelation, other aspects that we tend to see in our assessments. Fleet selectivity, as I mentioned, we often have many different fleets that have very different selectivities. Often the recreational fisheries catch the smaller fish. Uh, commercial fisheries tend to go after the larger individuals, but often we do have some kind of dome-shaped selectivity pattern to these fisheries, so there's a lot of diversity within that. And then, as I mentioned, the, the fleet allocation. So that's a, a big issue that we, we do deal with. We're currently in the situation of the new recreational data is gonna change the allocation. So there is potential for having to modify in these simulations, looking at time varying uh, fleet allocations to capture the changes. And so, as I mentioned, in terms of the estimation model, we, we want this framework to be very flexible. It, we essentially, do potentially plan on using SS in both aspects. However, I think the value of this approach is, is we've had data limited assessments that we've conducted and we've used DLM tool, but you know, honestly, we don't really see the same representation of the data quality that we have in the Southeast when we use some of these other approaches. So I think this would be a useful test to sort of get us to a closer point where we're starting with the kind of data that we see, the quality that we see. And yeah, so, and just to mention, we know that's a degree of sin, um, just estimating model, estimation model and operating model, but just to keep that. Yeah, yes, that's. <laughs> okay, so another challenge here is, and this is a good talking point for this conference is the balance between what gets changed within the SS platform and what do we do outside of it in R. So there's a fine balance there. The more we put into SS potentially, we don't want it to slow down the current software for those people that are not interested in those, those types of um, add-ons. But we also, in this case, want to have the ability to, every time SS would get updated, then the R code would have to be revised. So Nathan later will be talking about the decision support tool and much of that work was kind of working after outside of SS and writing our code and, and stuff. And um, I know he's had some working on the 3.3 version because that's one of the issues when you're not necessarily making changes internally is you're going to have to keep up with that as well. So there's a lot of things to keep in consideration here. Uh, let's see. Yeah, and I mean, the, the take home is really that if we do implement external R functions, then it will require updating those codes as there are changes in SS. So 
just things to keep in mind. And with that, so we've had, as I mentioned, this project's just kind of gotten off the ground. We've gotten some help from lots of folks, again, in the back row and others that are not at this talk, but this really is hopefully a big collaboration. And we certainly are very interested in getting folks that are, would like to be part of the beta testing team that have an interest in this type of analysis and, and helping out. And we're very interested, Nathan and I, throughout the rest of this conference to, to hear some features you all would be interested in seeing. And again, we're, we're hoping to recruit those of you that become part of our beta testing team. And with that, yes, please, any questions? Okay, thanks a lot, Skylar. Um, any questions? Yeah. Great talk. Um, do you know in terms of the structure of this, is it gonna be just our functions that you would use separately and then go back and forth to SS or are you looking to combine it into one flowing structure on a system? Yeah, so I, I believe it's gonna be different wrappers, different R wrappers, but I think some of the talk has been about maybe having a GUI interface. So Nathan might be able to provide more insight since he's one of the architects of the, the plan. I don't know if you want a mic. The GUI is, you know, a dream. Um, I'll show you my decision tool that has a GUI, but it tends to end up being, uh, I think, more hassle than it's worth, depending on, like, once you get into competent operators, it's, the, when you get the details, it gets really hard. But uh, the wrapper, it'll start out as an R package of generally independent functions, but um, eventually, hopefully, some sort of, yeah, cohesive, uh, not necessarily GUI, but interface um, that'll pull it all together. Yeah, Ernesto. Yeah, um, um, so I have two comments. They are not necessarily for you or for your presentation, but uh, they are kind of generic comments about how we are dealing with MSCs in general. Um, one of the things that I think are behind a lot of mistakes we make is that we see MSCs as an, as an extension of stock assessment, mm -hmm. and that's not true. And uh, one way to avoid that is exactly not developing MSCs within the framework where we do stock assessment because we end up locked on that framework. Okay. Um, my other comment is more about collaboration. It's, of course, you, you looked around and say, none of these guys are doing what we need, so I'm gonna, do, I'm gonna do my own framework. And then you come and ask people to collaborate with you to do your framework. But in fact, you're going through a lot of problems that those other guys already went through. And this is not really the way that we can actually collaborate on these things. And this is not for you, of course. This is about how we are gonna develop our tools here because it doesn't make sense. It simply doesn't make sense that you have another bunch of young scientists going through the same things that we have been going every time we invent a new MSC platform that will do everything in a pair of boots because that's what we are doing again. Yeah. No, great question. You're completely right about the stock assessment. That's only one component of the whole approach um, I know I'm very sensitive to the concept of MSE. It's been drilled in my head that this is not a clear MSE, but you know, I, th I think you're right, essentially. And we're, as, a, as this team goes forward, we definitely want to not try to reinvent the wheel when there's things maybe we could be joining in on. But in this case, uh, you know, we're certainly in the Southeast. We've, we've tried all of the other components. Yeah, well, we, we are, but in that case, we've, I think the complexities we do see in our stock assessments, we unfortunately can't, but maybe we can potentially look back at the FLR uh, framework. But I think that was the, the point of this project. And yes, I, I not, I'm just, my two cents, my you know, young scientist two cents is, we did try using what was out there already. And in this case, we just, we have so many different additions that are in our model that essentially we try to use other platforms and they break down. But I don't know if anyone else, if, yeah, Rick. Yeah, John Hampton wants to make a comment. Yeah, thanks, uh, Skylar, for the uh, excellent presentation. Um, I just wanted to check if I'm understanding the sort of uncertainty framework around the operating models correctly. So you anticipate using a, a range of different configured 
operating models, presumably to reflect um, structural uncertainty type, mm -hmm. type issues. And then within each of those, you'd be sampling from process error and recruitment and catchability, selectivity, et cetera. Yes. Um, how about estimation error? Um, do you also intend to include that and, and how would you be looking to do that? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, do you want to follow up? Well, you've got estimation error because you're estimating your synthesis model is not the same as the operating model, right? But I think the bigger challenge is how to deal with parameter uncertainty in the operating model, mm -hmm. uh, which involves running MCMC for the operating model as we've done elsewhere, and that's um, the Gemery problem. Uh, so there's two levels of estimation error. There's just it, given the best estimates for the operating model parameters and generated error, but if you start with error in the operating model parameters, everything compounds quite nicely. <laughs> Unpleasantly, realistically. Which is what we need. <laughs> yeah, anyone else? Yeah, uh, thanks, Ernesto, for, for that comment. Um, and and I, I think about it sort of at a strategic and a tactical level. I think building a tool like this that's close to the assessment model uh, helps us understand the true performance of the management system that is in operation today. Um, whereas a, uh, an MSC tool that is designed to evaluate alternative management and uh, you know, management procedures, um, you know, doing that at a more strategic level uh, with, with a dedicated approach uh, you know, may, may make sense. But I think doing it this way helps us understand the realities of what we purport to be doing, but actually can't do very well because of all the, the uncertainties and time lags involved. This helps us really uh, extend that. Um, and while I have the mic on, I just thought I'd comment that um, you know, with regard to doing things inside of SS versus in R, one of the things that you know, we already anticipate doing inside is really streamlining what gets reported and, and really speeding that up. And I've already worked with uh, John Noel to make a change in ADMD to uh, potentially help us even further by giving us a better way to jump straight to the forecast uh, in an existing uh, operating model. Okay, any other questions? Okay, I have a question. So, um, you know, stock synthesis can be used as a simulator and it mm -hmm. creates data based on the likelihood distribution, uh, likelihood functions you're using to fit to the data. Um, SES Sim goes one step further and allows you more flexibility in those mm -hmm. um, sampling distributions, particularly adding contamination and things like that. So how are you gonna address that in your MSE? So yeah, so we did have a call recently and we were talking to Kelly about potentially trying not to redo different work that's been done. I think the SS3 SIM doesn't necessarily have the feedback that we'd like to be able to loop into this process. That's why we're essentially trying to go above and beyond what's been done with SS3 SIM. Uh, because as Rick mentioned, this is really from a tactical approach. We definitely need to be able to you know, test some of these approaches that we plan on using with the interim analysis. Um, Nathan, I, did you want to add anything or? I think we can maybe talk offline as well. We're, we're definitely open to different suggestions. That's, that's right. No, I, I, I agree with Skylar. I think um, the collaboration with SS3 SIM is definitely going, going to happen. We, anything that's uh, currently existing, we don't want to, uh, to re, redo, but um, it gives more people uh, working on this now that can help to extend things. I think a lot of uh, what we're working on um, is gonna feed back into things like, if we extend new things, they can feed back into SS3 SIM, they can feed back into R for SS. Um, so at least from the, maybe not to the FLR, but from the, um, the SS, R infrastructure sort of world, most of what we do is either going to, we're gonna borrow from their work and then do extent, extended things that'll feed back into existing packages, so. They may be different names, but I think it's all going to work together. Anyone else got any comments or questions? Yeah, down the back. 
Hello. Yeah. So I was just um, interested in one of your slides where you have all the boxes and all the arrows. Um, yeah, that one. I, um, so I'm just curious as to which bits of those you're actually going to be focusing on primarily, because a lot of those have, um, arrows are already accounted for with the other um, packages you mentioned. So yeah, so where, as where are the weak weak links, so to speak? So I believe basically where we're going to spend much of our time is is essentially working on these functions to show how we sample the data. So I know we've talked about like for example the length compositions. Uh, what we tend to simulate, nor where what you would see normally, the data we generally have, we, we, it would not pass the red face test. You know exactly which data is simulated and you know which data is, is real. So I think essentially where we are is we're just sort of, this is the, the proposed flow of where we're going with this project. Here is where we're essentially starting to d d decide how we're going to do this, where does this fit in, where do we balance between changes in, within SS versus these external functions that get written. But from there, I mean, it's really just focusing on at where we're at now is trying to get these, these data sets that reflect what sort of what the quality is from what we see in our models. And then from there, it really, yeah, there's a lot of stuff that is probably up and running already about converting those to data sets and then using it in the further framework. But I think for now, Nathan, did you, I mean, that's pretty much where we are. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll talk about it a bit in my uh, talk on the decision support tool as well. One of the, um, I think, important things to point out, and Skylar did, that uh, we have these very complicated uh, assessments, and we sort of live out on the fringes a lot. A lot of the things that Rick's added in has been at the uh, behest of the Southeast Center. And so while like, we do accept that a lot of these, these arrows already exist, um, a lot of the time they exist in a, in a limited way. So they'll, people are, maybe it's a generalized tool they're working within, but the functions and the packages will work up until a point and almost all the assessments that we're trying to apply them to you turn them on and you get a big error that says oh, that was that was rough uh, i'm going to work on that later you know or you know come come in uh have a crack at it so that's really where we're coming from is sort of trying to make packages like reading things into r there are functions that exist to read things from ss into r but they'll stop at some point. All the, the thing that makes SS great is all those conditional um, options and conditional choices and most existing uh, software doesn't, doesn't touch on them. It just says, I'm gonna stop at this point and it works for my assessments, which is most of them, yeah. but. Okay, um, yeah, thanks a lot, Skylar. And we'll break for afternoon tea for half an hour.